Hey guys, enter the stars, and let's find out what exactly they don't want us to see. As I showed on previous videos, my interstellar decode was banned in the entire world. None of the platforms would allow this video to be up. So what are we going to do? We're going to remaster the video. We're going to take the information from it, and we're going to present it here without clips from the film so that this information can be shared with everybody. Now, as you guys know, we were all hot on the heels of this 5th of November date. We compared it to Sawin, which is related to Imbolc and related to Halloween. All of it is Druid pagan sacrifice. We proved that in previous videos. But what we didn't know is that November 5th was the release date of the film Interstellar in 2014. Now, this is nuts. This film actually foreshadows the Paris bombings, and we're going to get to that in a minute. But for now, we're going to look at some of the eerie synchronicities as we remaster the information represented to you and so that you guys can see the truth. Now, this released on 5th of November, just like I said. And the interesting thing about this date is that it does, in fact, relate back to Halloween. This is Halloween. We also understand that Halloween, October 31st, in the other calendars, is in fact 1113. The date of the bombings, it is Friday the 13th. The date of the Paris bombings is in fact the date of Halloween. I'll show you that right now. November 13th. This is probably why they don't want you to see this video, because not only... Have we proven this on previous movies and decodes where it's the pattern is repeating now? So now we have a pattern of foreshadowing in films of mass sacrifice events. Now, what is so special about Interstellar? What is in this that is exposing them? I'm going to show it to you. There's a character in this film, and her name is... Murph, played by Jessica Castine. Murphy Murph. Now, when I look up Murphy, it is the same as the demon from hell, Mephistopheles. This was in a 1926 film called Faust. They profiled Mephistopheles, Murphy. And it just so happens the girl in this film, her name is Murph, Murphy. Now, when I do a search, when I do a Google search on Mephisto Company, look what comes up. It is a French company, a French shoe company. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. I didn't type in shoe company. I typed in Mephisto company and pops this very bizarre world's finest footwear mephisto french company okay now this was a year ago you guys a year and this company is based out of sarborg france as you can see here so we've got the france component we have the mephisto component Murphy, we have the Halloween component, the 5th of November, that we've proven. We're putting this entire thing together. And lo and behold, in the script, I looked for shoe references, and there are many. The film actually opens with the first words, shake a leg, Murph, get your move on. There's your foot shoe reference to her. And then later, they mention Murph. And you know your kids know it, especially Murph. And after the end of this dialogue, school says you're going to follow in my footsteps. There's the footsteps, the shoe reference. Now, Matthew McConaughey is MM. There's your an additional MM reference. Okay, 1313 alphanumerically. And I mentioned 1313 in the decode that was blocked worldwide. They're pointing forward to 1113. How do I know? Here is another 
interesting, bizarre connection. This film released also in the UK, right over there near where this is happening on November 7th. November 7th is the 311th day of the year. Remember, 311 was Japan's 911, and 1113 is when this all happened. There's your 1113 encoded in the 311. So these people are very, very accurate about this stuff, almost on a supernatural level. Also, we had the Georgia Guidestones Cube that had the MM on it. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, this is the Georgia Guidestones Cube. This is the cube. This is what it looks like. And on this cube, it was placed on 816. That just so happened, here's the MM here, just so happened to be the exact day, 930, was the day that the first diagnosed case of Ebola on American soil in Dallas, Texas. Okay? Also, on 930, the following year, just weeks ago, the film The Walk released, and 930 is 44 days before the Paris bombings. Obama's the 44th president. Now, Anne Hathaway, the lead female, was born on November 12th. She was 33 when the film released. I'll say that again. Anne Hathaway, the lead female, was born on November 12th in this film. This is Anne Hathaway. November 12th, of course, is one day before the Paris bombings. So that will be her legacy, the Paris bombings and her birthday falling on Roughly the same day, because in France, it's the next day, right? Here's her birthday here. I'm starting to wonder if they make all these birthdays up. Now, there are more personal synchronicities within this film. There is two robots, one named Casey and the other named Tars. I was my second wife. Her name was Tara, and she was born on 9-11. And of course, we looked at what Casey might really mean that it's Yeshua backwards when you rotate the C. Trade the A and the C and the A and the U and switch it around. It looks like Yeshua backwards. So I believe this is the reference in this film. They like to use mirrors. And finally, we have Matthew McConaughey, who is born on the 4th of November, one day before the 5th of November. And look at this heliotrope purple the magic colors, full knowledge of what is going on here. This guy is pretty high up, most likely, in, in, in the knowledge of all of, of this occult. He knows exactly what he's doing. Now, some of you are probably wondering, wow, you've got your, you've got your name and your ex-wife's name in this film. She was born on 9-11. And... Anne Hathaway was born one day off from Paris's 9-11. And you would think that I would be living in fear, but I do not. Because in the same way this information was revealed to us miraculously, it offers protection. Now, all of this film is rotating around the fact and centering around the fact that there is a black hole near Saturn. It is all about the cube, the tesseract, even mentioned here in the plot. The Tesseract was in the, the uh, book about time travel. This is the book here, A Wrinkle in Time. And within this book, they talk about a Tesseract. The first time that the word Tesseract was used was in 1888. Here is the figure eight on the cover of A Wrinkle in Time, which mentions the Tesseract. But here is the record for Tesseract, first being coined in 1888 by Charles Howard Hinton. So there's your 888 connection again. Remember, Obama was born 88 days before Halloween, and he is fully invested in, in, in the middle of all of what we're talking about right now. Okay. This is the Tesseract. It is a cube. This is mentioned in the plot of Interstellar. 
they want you to accept the cube. Saturn. The North Pole of Saturn is a cube. Here are some pictures of the North Pole of Saturn. And it is a hexagonal but three-dimensional cube. You connect the lines in the middle and you have a three-dimensional cube. That is what it really is. It looks like a hexagon, but it's really a cube. This is what rules our reality. This is what rules our ev the evil in this world. This is the eye of evil. We have the guy eye of good and the eye of evil. And inside your eye, it's lined with the rods and cones in a honeycomb matrix. We've showed that to you guys many times. Okay? Now we're going to get into some of the other parts of this film that maybe I haven't covered yet. We're going to go through this film with a fine-tooth comb. We're going to do screenshots, see if we can't fill in the rest of the blanks. But the French connection is real. There's your demon from hell, Mephisto, the shoe company from France, pointing forward to their 9-11. Now the film centers around the dust and the dirt, and they talk about how it has infiltrated everything. And it almost looks as though they are referencing the Dust Bowl. They are interviewing in the opening scenes people that look like they were around during the Dust Bowl in the Midwest, describing that dust was everywhere. And they had to turn the plates upside down so that they didn't fill with dust. Well, guess what? The World Trade Center turned to dust. Guess what? Sandy Hook Elementary was dustified to erase all evidence of what happened. Guess what? The curse in the Bible was the curse of the dust. The serpent was told you will go upon your belly and eat dust all the days of your life. And then miraculously, Cain also was given a curse of dust, that the, that the fields would not yield his crops. And that is exactly what happened in the opening of this film. The crops would not grow anymore. Basically mimicking the story of, the Cain, of Cain, and these are the Canaanites that they're talking about, always trying to find a way out of the curse into the stars. Do you now understand what is really going on here? And they're trying to drag you into their deception. But there is only one way off this planet, and that is Jesus Christ. Not their promises of finding other worlds and planets. This one has to live out its destiny. And Jesus is the only way to the Father is through the Son. So when I say enter the stars, it means something completely different than what these people are talking about. We are talking about our, our place outside of the prison, the honeycomb prison, outside of the matrix of the inner eye, and past and on through to the white light of heaven. Heaven is where we will go if we believe. Because it isn't about another planet and these people providing the solution. It's about us knowing exactly what the Bible says, that all will know his name when he returns. We all know who he is. We will all see him all together. We won't have to go anywhere. He is coming for us. Now we have some other bizarre synchronicities. Matthew McConaughey was in two time travel films, Contact and Interstellar. Interstellar released at 11.7, Contact released on 7.11. Mirror Dates, same actor. We also had the Saturn Rainbow of Fire. This is the black hole and what it looks like in the film. It looks like Saturn with rings in a rainbow. Now, the rainbow is interesting because a rainbow can only be viewed at 42 degrees from your perspective. We also know that the angle from the outside iris of your eye to the center of your lens within your eye is a perfect 42 degree angle. There's something about the rainbow. And oftentimes the devil will try to impersonate God using this rainbow. We know the rainbow came from God. It was part of the covenant with Noah after the flood. Now, this just keeps getting even more weird because everybody saw the images at the Bataclan Theater shaped like a heart. We know that Twitter changed their, their favorite button to a heart on 11-3, one day before Egyptian Valentine's Day. We also know that all about all the heart imagery 
in the trailer that came out for Alice Through the Looking Glass, which released on the 5th of November. All of this is related. And of course, now we have the heart on the Bataclan Theater floor. It seems like it was perfectly and intentionally smeared into this heart shape. And now, in the movie, Interstellar, the woman whose birthday was one day before the death in Paris talks about love transcending dimensions. Here, Anne Hathaway talks about following her heart. Just before she talks about love. We love people who have died. Where is the social utility in that? None. Maybe it means something more, something we can't yet understand. Maybe it's some evidence, some artifact of a higher dimension that we can't consciously perceive. I'm drawn across the universe to someone I haven't seen in a decade, who I know is probably dead, Love is the one thing we're capable of perceiving that transcends dimensions of space and time. Maybe we should trust that, even if we can't understand it yet. Do you see how they're setting all this up for the great deception? This is Anne Hathaway's words in this film, who was born one day before the Bataclan Theater Massacre and all the shooting and, the, and everything that happened in Paris, France. So this is, this is it. We, fi we figured this out. It is clear they are foreshadowing these things in films and movies. The question is what, is, what is the effect of all of the sheep and the masses that don't see what's going on? Now, in this scene, they talk about the faked moon landings, the Apollo missions. And this woman talks about how they had to correct the textbooks to account for the faked moon landing. And that it was done to bankrupt the Soviet Union, to get them invested in trying to come up with rockets to get to the moon. And so this, the woman that is explaining this in the scene is, is framed as a lunatic, crazy person. And she says, we should talk about what's going on in this planet instead of exploring the universe and do you so do you see the juxtaposition okay they're making the people who understand the truth look like they're crazy and that they're making the mainstream people be the ones who want to explore the stars right explore what's above okay which is the deception and murph mephisto got into a fist fight with several of her classmates over this Apollo nonsense. Murph, Mephisto, fist fight. I still don't think your bookshelf is trying to talk to you. This is when the books fall out of the bookshelf. Remember, Mephisto is the shoe company. And here's the scene right after he says, your bookshelves are not trying to talk to you. Murph, Mephisto, the shoe company. So Matthew McConaughey discovers NASA. He gets the coordinates through some kind of a magnetic gravitational anomaly that appears inside his house. He writes down the ones and zeros and comes up with the binary code to the coordinates, leading him to a secret NASA base. And they say, we are NASA. And as he stands in front of this pillar, we see evil in the background. And as many of you know, I've done videos on NASA and when you spell that backwards, it says Satan. But the T is missing, but it's really there because there's a red chevron. Now, the, for those who are having a hard time believing in a spiritual realm and anything outside of this matter of reality that we call this reality, all of these films have biblical elements to them. In this film, it is the Lazarus missions. Lazarus, of course, a Bible character. And there were 12 worlds they were looking at. Those are the 12 disciples right here out of the script. And, and it is McConaughey's job now to become the new pilot for the last and final mission to try to find potential worlds that they can escape to because Earth, they believe, is dying. 
Mephisto shoes as Matthew McConaughey goes in to say goodbye to Murph. Mephisto, here are all her shoes on the shoe rack on the back of the door. You can't make this up as he squeezes through. There's your cube, Saturn. He goes to leave. He says his final goodbyes to Murph. And here's the shoe rack on the back of the door. A book falls off of the bookshelf as he's walking out. And it's just, it's unbelievable imagery here, you guys. And as McConaughey drives away, and the countdown ensues for his takeoff, driving off the farm, we see the heart-shaped tracks, just like the heart-shaped mud tracks at the Bataclan Theater. And as I tell you, you cannot make this stuff up. Side by side, it's a match. Now, if you weren't sure about Matthew McConaughey, Tars the Robot has a humor setting on it, and the humor setting is high, so he talks to Matthew McConaughey about blowing him out of the airlock. This is a direct reference to the film Alien, where Sigourney Weaver blows the alien out of the airlock in that film. The alien, the serpent, spider-like alien out of the airlock. Now in this scene, he says literal, heart of darkness, as they're looking at the singularity. And the singularity is shaped like Saturn. Here is the script, a literal heart of darkness. You guys, I don't think the heart symbol is a good thing. That is why Twitter changed the favorite button to a heart. One day before Egyptian Valentine's Day. Now in this scene, she talks about the beings that led them there. And that for them, time is relative. And for them, time is like mountains. That they can climb up in the past like a canyon. And in fact, and in fact that is how it is in heaven. There is no time in heaven. But they're not talking about heavenly beings in this diatribe here. They are talking about the beings that brought them there to try to save the earth. And that is the dark beings. So the entire movie is centered around the fact that farming was in danger because there was a blight that was killing everything. One fruit, one vegetable at a time. Well, I looked up the word blight since they used it in the description of the plot of this film. And I found something pretty amazing, that there was a great French wine blight caused by American, American wine grapes that were brought over, carried across the Atlantic, and wiped out the French wine industry in the late 1800s. America and France. Now in this scene, the daughter Murph tries to warn her dad or ask him questions about, did you know there was no return trip? Did you know there was no way to save humanity? But a, the, a robot intercepts the message. So again, it's the betrayal of the robot, just like we had in Alien, the Alien films. They had the betrayal of the robot. The android was always betraying the crew. And it happens again here. And then that brought me to the point where we were looking at a far off distance shot of the ship. And it looks like a serpent head. In fact, it looks like the Nostromo from the original Alien film. It is the head of the Cobra, the serpent. On your left, the Ranger, the spacecraft from the film Interstellar that we're decoding now. On your right, the, the Narcissus, which is the escape craft of the Nostromo, where the alien is blown out the airlock. And as you can see, they're very similar. They look like the head of a cobra. And we see that now we get the reference of blowing them out the airlock because the ships are almost identical. And the joke is, when Ripley blows the serpent out the airlock, the serpent really never leaves. It's always with us. The serpent will be cursed upon to go upon its belly and eat dust the rest of the days of its life. Cain carried the serpent's seed. That's why he was also cursed to the dust as well. 
Most of us are running around with serpent DNA within us, the reptilian brain. The only way to correct it is Jesus Christ. That is the big white elephant in the room that no religion will tell you. No religion will tell you this. Because then they knew they would know that you would need Christ. And in your mind, you would have a higher faith that transcends all. So they find Dr. Mann. And he, they ask him to describe his planet. He was in a cryo sleep. And he says, the days are 67 hours long. The nights are 67 and far colder. 7 plus 6 is 13. France. 11, 13. So toward the end of this film, Matthew McConaughey goes into the event horizon, into the black hole. He gets sucked into this tesseract, this cube, and he can see Murph as she was a little girl through the bookshelf of all places. But he's trapped. And he sees the moment in time over and over again of him coming in and saying goodbye in, this, in Murph's room, which is the center of this magnetic and gravitational anomaly, which is basically himself talking to himself from the other side of the wormhole, telling himself not to go on the mission so he could spend the last days in the entire life with his family instead of leaving. And there again is your book, your, your shoe, shoe rack, uh, remember Mephisto is Mephisto Shoes from France. And in the final analysis, he decides he's going to use love to communicate with Murph through the barrier. That is what he's decided. So this is all ties in with everything we've just been talking about, Egyptian Valentine's Day and, and the love principle. But it's the false love that they're talking about, you guys. It's the deception. Here's a script. And this is what he says. The end of the film. Love, Tars, love. It's just like Brand said, my connection with Murph. It is quantifiable. It is the key. Why are we here to find out how to tell? And in the last moments of the film, he has put into orbit around Saturn where there is a station named after Murphy called Cooper Station. And this is where the human race lives, orbiting Saturn. And... He says to Murphy, his daughter, who is now old and aged, you told them I like farming. And this goes back to the Canaanite theme we were talking about because Cain was the first farmer. And God had to reject, God had to reject his gift because he had the serpent blood running through him. It was for no other reason that he could, he could not accept his offering other than he had the serpent blood running through him. He accepted Abel's offering because Abel was pure. But then Cain killed his brother. And that is how this movie ends. With him telling her, you told them I like farming. And the whole movie is about the farming. The farming of Cain. And the first fruits that he brought to God that were rejected. And here it is. And that concludes a full, complete analysis of this film, you guys. All of that packed into this two over two-hour film. Take care and be safe.